Um, we're going to have kind of like a talk uh, between Rohan and Drew Austin. And the topic is called Nights of Degent Highlight. <sighs> 23 minutes. Timer's on. Pressure's on. Yeah, let's keep it conversational. Um, <laughs> it's 3.30. <laughs> um, so, Drew, thank you for joining today. Um, for those of you who don't know, Drew Austin is the co-founder of Knights of Degen, which is one of the OG NFT project, and is also a ma the managing partner of Redbeard Ventures, and, um, and has been a builder from the very beginning, right? 816, he started building, has seen the inside outs of how businesses get built, get destroyed at the same time and come up with new business models and uh, you know took a plunge into web3 and crypto and has been an amazing partner um, you know and a thought partner in terms of helping us push horizon labs boundary in terms of how we think and hopefully we're adding the same amount of value um, to nights of degen and beyond um, before we dig into what's night of degen drew would you mind just give a quick introduction about yourself, your background, and what led you to Knights of Deed? And let's uh, kick off from there. Yeah, of course. Um, thank you. So um, my background, I've been an entrepreneur since I was in college. Uh, been starting tech companies, a lot of frontier technology businesses. Uh, a decade ago, I was one of the early Google Glass wearable technology partners, building applications for the enterprise. Over the past six years, I was uh, building an enterprise software company doing um, an AI recruitment process automation platform. We sold that company about 18 months ago. I knew that I wanted to get, uh, I knew during that process, you know, I was spending my nights in the middle of the pandemic, you know, pretty much getting lost in Web3, lost in the metaverse, waking up the next morning having to sell HR technology just wasn't it for me anymore. So I, uh, I knew I had to go all in on JPEGs. So yeah, so we um, uh, started up an Angelist syndicate. I wanted to go into full-time venture capital. Um, I don't know, are you guys familiar with Angelist? Who's, uh, who's used Angelist before? Show of hands. Yeah. So Angelist is an amazing platform. Started there. Um, we, we became super active in Web3 deals, investing in companies like Dapper Labs, Sandbox, Wilder World, Genies, uh, Ceramic, uh, obviously Reddick Farm, <laughs> Scarab right here, Hero Maker. We've done, so we've done a lot of uh, you know, great investments, great Web3 investments. And um, I've been investing in crypto since 2013. I got my first NFTs in 2018. I started collecting uh, art on Super Rare. We actually made them our first seed and Series A investment. So i uh, been active in the space for a while. Uh, and about a year ago this week, actually, um, we launched Knights of Degen. Um, and I guess we'll get into that in a second. Fantastic. That's a great overview. Um, so let's get straight to it, right? So Knights of Degen. A help educate the audience, what's a DGEN? And then what's the genesis story of Knights of DGEN? Yeah, so I mean, I guess the, we started, the, the whole premise started, uh, my buddy Jared um, Augustine, who's a co-founder of mine in the project, um, we both recently sold our tech companies. He sold his company to Thriller, I sold mine to Pandologic. We were, you know, in the pandemic, we're all talking about, you know, what are we talking about with our friends all day? And my, I'm in countless group chats, and they pretty much are all either about sports and sports betting, NFT speculation, crypto speculation, anything that we can have fun, share alpha, and make money, we speculate on it. <laughs> and um, so we started and we're like, there's not many NFT communities that are built on these shared interests at the foundational level. So, um, you know, the, the, the term that we refer to each other as are degens, not degenerates. Degenerates are, you know, they're on a different playing field. They're the guys who are still at the casino at six in the morning and they're there on a Wednesday. But like the degens, they're, they're, they're a little bit more informed. They're a little bit more knowledgeable. They're a little more collaborative, but they're still speculating on anything and everything. It doesn't matter if it's WNBA basketball or a JPEG or an, uh, a startup. If they can speculate on it, if they have alpha on it, they want to do it. So um, we found a group of like-minded individuals and then got started there. Uh, we built out a founding team that was uh, really impressive. We have uh, 
Blake Jameson, who was voted the number one sports artist in the country found by Beckett Magazine. He's our creative tech director. We have our amazing CTO, Peter, who's been in Web3 for years. Uh, had a partnerships from Pinterest. I mean, just a really, really well-balanced team. Um, and then some great advisors that we brought on. Uh, uh, Jerry Ferrara, Turtle from Entourage, Ja Rule, Cynthia Froyland from NFL Network. People that can open up doors to different ecosystems and communities. So. That's where we, start, we started. We launched 8,888 nights. Those were our, you know, the, the, the PFPs, the profile pictures. To date, we're actually the number one sports PFP that's been sold on OpenSea. So that's been, you know, it's pretty cool. We have some real traction. We did about 10 million in total sales, about 5 million in revenue. And, um, you know, our whole, from the very, very beginning, our, our concept, once we launched, we said, we don't want to just be another NFT project. We don't want to also just sell NFT after NFT. We want to build a business. Um, we saw this as a business. We didn't even use the term project. We were a company. We're a business. And um, the, the kind of the mandate or like the vision we laid out for the, for the, for the group and for the team was we wanted to take the, the Disney approach. Uh, we, we kind of referenced ourselves as like a, a decentralized Disney for DGENs. And we, we, we said we're starting with this IP. Let's take that IP, let's expand it to different verticals that we can then monetize, we can create more awareness, create more attention. Um, and that's what we did, and that's how we got started. That's, that's amazing. I think you touched on one word, community, a few times there. I'm curious to know, and Garib was there uh, on the panel before, there used to be community creation in real life, Comic-Con, great example, and you helped build a community around these PFPs and you've also been part of uh, startups building stuff in Web2. How does that experience differ there versus the journey that you've been through? Oh, this is, yeah, I mean, this is what blew my mind, really. Um, so we've started, we kind of, from day one, we, we operated as almost like a DAO light. You know, we're a corporate, we're, you know, corporation, but you know, we felt very strongly about heading towards our vision of distributed ownership and the concept that we, can real, that we want to reward participation at various different levels. So you know, that, was a, that was a really important component for us. And what I've seen that's really blown my mind about this whole entire uh, Knights of DGEN business is we had a team of about 14 people that are like our, you know, kind of like our core incorp like employees of the company. Um, we have 92 people in our Slack that are working on different committees that are all from the community. Um, and the way that, hop that way that happened, which is really powerful, um, we have, the way we're structured is we have our, our corporation, which has our employees. Then we have an elected group of community council members. Um, this is what was, they were voted on, nominated by the community to represent the community in the governance of some of the different initiatives and projects, which I'll talk about in a second. After that, each project and initiative has an elected committee associated to it. So, you know, each, you know, for example, we have a fan-controlled football team, I could go into it in a second, that, about where we own a decentralized professional sports team. And we govern the team, we draft the players, we call the plays, it's a really uh, incredible experience. But there's a committee that manages our, our, our draft research, our, our streaming, our media, all of that stuff. So, um, and then after that, we have the committee at large. So what we found, and I think this is really important for, for DAOs in general, is that it's not just an all, an end, like a wild, wild west of decentralization. It's about defining responsibilities. The Inc. has responsibilities, the council has responsibilities, the committees have responsibilities, and the community at large have responsibilities. And if we each handle our responsibilities, that's going to make a very well-oiled machine of a business. And that's what we've uh, been able to do pretty well so far. Yeah, I think this kind of brings it all like full circle. We've had DAO panel earlier as well. So this sort of falls in that sub DAO category where you're creating, you know, committee members or organizers who are managing your treasury, your operations, your marketing, and everything else in between, which is not necessarily managed at the DAO level. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we. The way we've, um, so like, I'll tell you a little bit about what we have been doing. So for Knights of DGEN, um, we started, we had this kind of picture in our head of, hey, we're watching our community kind of form. 
And, you know, they're talking sports every day. They're talking, we're watching the games together. We're discussing who to bet on. We're, you know, we're just sharing ideas. We're watching whatever. And we're like, this feels like a Vegas sports bar. Like that Vegas sports bar experience where you're, you're hanging out with friends, you're talking, you're eating, you're drinking, you're watching the games, you're rooting for your teams, you're playing games, you're gambling. All of these different components that we're like, how does this like, how do we bring, but we have a very distributed audience, like they're from all over the world. How do we bring that feeling of a digital sports bar, a, a sports bar in Vegas to the metaverse? So we started piecing things together. We said, first, let's get into professional sports. We had a thesis that fandom and distributed ownership are a very powerful combination. And I think that's been validated very quickly by us. So we have a, a fan-controlled football team, as I mentioned. The community owns 5% of the team. Um, we have a, we're investors in Wagme United. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Wagme United, but that was a group of NFT influencers that have acquired a soccer club. I'm gonna call it soccer, I'm sorry. It's just too confusing for me. Um, but yeah, we, call, we acquired a soccer club that's uh, 45 minutes outside of London called Crawley Town. Um, so now our community has rallied around these two professional teams so far as our teams. We have viewing parties, we have streaming, we have revenue, revenue streams with these teams. So these are now assets of our kingdom. From there, we moved into gaming, um, where I think this is going to be really our, one of our bread and butters. We have about nine teams that we own. The community council runs, curates, does diligence, decides which assets to procure, and then manages those, those assets. And then we have community members that play in the games to build the value of those assets. So what we formed here, really organically, just because it aligned with our interests, was a gaming guild that's powered by our community. And now we've become a real influential player in the ecosystem of these games. After that, we launched KOD Media, a lot of community-driven shows that cover our sports teams, that cover betting alpha, that covers fantasy sports, that covers our esports teams. So if you see like what's kind of happening here, people can participate at various different levels. You can be a passive investor. You can be a, uh, a builder and part of our committees and council. You can be a player in our gaming guild. You can, you, know, you can watch and become a fan through our KOD media network. So all of these different ways to participate eventually should be rewarded because you're providing value to the network. So you know, that's kind of the, the platform and the foundation that we're putting in place here. Um, we've even launched our own beer, D. Jen Hayes, with another partner. We launched, uh, I'm an investor in a company called Pop Chew, which is a network of ghost kitchens, uh, big restaurant chains, um, and what we've done with them is we're launching in 30 to 60 days, we'll be launching a delivery restaurant brand. We're calling it d -Gen Sauce. And it's basically, we just pour vodka sauce on a lot of cool shit, because I love vodka sauce. And um, I think, I think feel like there's an opportunity there. <laughs> just, I don't really know anybody who owns the vodka sauce space. So, um, but this all kind of plays into, again, we can order food together, we can drink together, we can watch our teams. We have a KFFL fantasy football league with 240 teams across 20 divisions of 12. We have contests going on around every major sporting event. You can play together, you can bet together, you can do all of these different things and that's the utility, that's true utility. And you know, ultimately what we're doing with Horizon here is we're gonna be working on the token and the DAO, and that's our big shift now. And the token is going to weave all of this together. And to me, even as an venture investor, the winners of Web3 are gonna be the ones that truly understand tokenomics and utility. If you can, if you can I mean, think about it this way. You have traditional companies that have you know, assets under management, the speculation of traders, that makes up the market cap and the stock price. In Web3, you have assets under management, you have the speculation of traders, but then you have utility, and that makes up the market price. If, util if you nail utility, then your market price is gonna, your market cap is gonna go up and up and up, and then you get to reinvest back in the business, the market cap goes up, you reinvest back in the business. That is a powerful cycle. And we're seeing, it, we're seeing it firsthand. We're able to make acquisitions, attract talent, with even just the, the, the token that we're, that's upcoming. We're already using that as a way to, to, to acquire other businesses, even though it's not even out yet. So, you know, I'm just, I think it's a really powerful thing to understand that cycle. And, um, 
you know, now you know, I'm spending all my time with Caspers and Rohan, really trying to challenge us to think like, what is the next step of, 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 of tokenomics? How do we push this? How do we make it better than what we've seen before? Because I just don't think it's worth settling. It's not why I'm, that's not why I'm in this space. Like, I'm fucking running a Knights of D-Gen business. Like, we need, to be throw, we need to throw shit to the wall here and see what sticks. And that's like the beauty of this is rapid experimentation. Rapid experimentation, continue to create utility, continue to create reasons for engagement, revenue, new opportunities for our community to participate, and um, that's what we're about. So if I hear you right, so there are two elements to it, right? One is thinking of this entire space evolving and having that business mindset, but at the same time having these rapid experimentation. But given how fastly it can you know, go in so many different directions, how do you bring it back home and narrow the scope of that from a business sense, right? You have 10 opportunities, you have to narrow down two, three at max, right? Beyond that, in, in typical business world, it's hard to do. Yeah, everyone's, you, you, it's easy to say you're spreading yourself too thin, but yeah. I, that, I spread myself too thin if it was 12 of us. Right. The pow, like, why would we resist leveraging the power of decentralization? The power of decentralization is pe we're giving people the opportunity to participate and earn. And like, I'm telling you, I see this every single day. We have people from, you know, Iowa, the middle of Iowa, or, you know, we have one guy from North Carolina, one guy from, you know, all over, you know, all over the world, but like also like middle America where I would never have known these people. And they come in and they contribute. The next thing you know, they're defining roles for themselves or creating. The next thing you know, they're earning. And now they went from a job, one went from being a high school teacher, the other one went from doing like uh, some kind of sales job to now working in Web3 and in sports on their passions. So if we can build a foundation to give people the, the ability to gain financial freedom by working on the things that they're passionate about and provide that infrastructure and that support to enable them to capitalize on their interests and passions, that's a really powerful thing that I'm not gonna be like, oh no, no, let's not spread ourselves too thin. If we have the resources, let's go execute. We just need to be very clear on what is our hypothesis, what are, we, what are we going out to validate or invalidate, and if something doesn't work, throw it away if it doesn't meet our criteria, and then just be okay with that. Um, and some things are gonna take off and some things won't, and all of them should drive demand and, for the token, all of them should create more value and engagement opportunities for the community, and then every single one of these things should be a learning experience. 100% agree, I think it's opening up doors for so many people who were previously unseen, unheard, in different parts of not just the US, but across the globe, right? So it's a massive opportunity to be had. So switching gear just a little bit. Um, now, going through the process of the fungible token launch uh, with us, as well as seeing this phase evolution per se, right? This entire NFT uh, space started off as like PFPs and then art and everything else in between we're starting to see a shift in the narrative there, right? As you being one of the OG players, uh, you know, participating and coming out with a fungible token launch, what do you think would be the right value add that will get the community excited? Yeah. Um, and, wh and what are kind of the building blocks towards it? Yeah, so, I mean, we're, we're spending a lot of time thinking about you know, what is our token? What does it represent? I mean, there's a few things I'll just kind of highlight quickly of like what we're about. I think the first thing is gaming. You know, we're, we're, we're doubling down on, um, on fantasy sports. That's a big thing for us, and decentralized fantasy sports, and building out an infrastructure around that. So that's something that, you know, you'll hear more about in the next few weeks, but, you know, we've made some big pushes in that direction to give immediate utility for the token through uh, decentralized fantasy sports. That's one. Two, we have this thing called uh, bet to earn. These are all things that we really haven't talked about publicly yet, but you know, things I'll just share a little bit. We have a bet to earn protocol where we want to reward people for, for um, authorizing their different sports books accounts and just tracking and aggregating their activity. And we want to reward people for participating in DGEN activities. And we're going, we see that people are going to have basically like their own DGEN identity, their own DGEN profile, where it's like, what are you doing? What are you betting on? What are you speculating on? What NFTs are you trading? What types of participation and creation and entrepreneurship are you doing within our community? And how can we track 
measure, visualize, incentivize, and reward those types of activities. And we're building out uh, and we're piecing together a tech stack. Um, a lot of often times with companies that I'm actually invested in, uh, a company called Zero Tech, which is the infrastructure to Wilder World. If anyone's familiar with that, they're, um, they built, they're, we're building a lot of our DAO infrastructure on top of Zero Tech. A company called Cube, um, another one that's another portfolio company of Redbeard, which is you know a former Google Mine team that's come together to to track um, and measure um, on chain and off chain activities, and then enable that type of rewarding and participation accordingly. So for us, we want to we want to um, introduce opportunities for play, for fandom, quantify that fandom. And, and reward it accordingly and build profiles around that. And then all of this infrastructure, our token, our content network, our operational staff, our, our gaming, are all platforms for you to build on top of. For you to come in and say, hey, I want to build a new show about, uh, about cricket. Great, come in here, build a show about cricket, expand it to that audience, and hopefully we bring in new people tonight and have another asset that we can monetize and put, you know, ad dollars against potentially. So, or, you know, hey, I want to build on top of our decentralized fantasy infrastructure, I want to do a, a League Two European Soccer Club Fantasy League. Fantastic. Go create it leveraging our infrastructure and everything that you do drive demand back to the token because that's what, that's our product. The token's our product. Um, and like our, you know, we're raising, you know, venture around right now, Knights of Degen, because again, we're treating this as a real, this is a real business. We plan to venture raise this, support our, you know, scale up our operations, scale up our engineering. But the whole point is to provide the, the infrastructure again to support community building and community development and expand the ecosystem. Yeah, I know I'll be excited about cricket and creating actual football <laughs> teams around. <laughs> um, since we have just a little over a minute left, You've explained the journey so far. If you were to go back and change any element, um, you know, from the NFT to bringing all the pieces together to now what you're envisioning the future, is there anything you would change or any lessons that you would want to, you know, yeah. let the audience know? I mean, I think like, listen, we haven't had our viral moment. Like, and, and I think there's a good and bad to it. One, I think we're personally the most undervalued NFT project in the game. So, you know, not financial advice. Um, but I, I think we're the most undervalued project in the game. I also think that we, we haven't had that viral moment where like, you know, some projects they launch, they're up to 20 ETH within days. But I think it's, come, it's an advantage for us because we've grinded and built every day with our community, every single day, and we know what they want. You know, we know our community is not looking for a fanny pack. Our community is looking for gaming. They're looking for betting alpha. They're looking for opportunities to be entrepreneurs. So that's what we build with them. And uh, I think long term, that's going to put us in a much more sustainable position. And the reality is only 2% of our whole NFT project is out of the 8,888 are actually even listed for sale. So like we have a sticky community. We now, we spent the first year building the foundation. I think year two is going to be about marketing and telling that story so we can reach new users. And that's a lot of what we're doing with Bet to Earn and what we're doing with, you know, when, our, when we launch our DGEN NFT twos or, you know, we launched a project called Steeds that sold out, the 4,444 Steeds, which are like the Knights travel companion. So, you know, we, do, we're, we just have so many really exciting projects and we plan to just make sure that we have the operational infrastructure to support the community, support the DAO, and to be able to scale accordingly. Thank you, Drew. And that's uh, time's up as well. Everyone, Drew Austin, co-founder of Knights of Legion. Thank you both. Thanks, Rohan and Drew.